Sublime Text 4 has a ton of new features and quality of life enhancements, but none are going to be more obvious to you than the visual changes to the application as a whole. Now, whether you want to make your copy of Sublime Text 4 look just like it did in Sublime Text 3, you want to experiment with some of the new visual capabilities that it has, or you're just curious about why things don't quite seem to look the way that they did before, today's video is going to tell you everything you need to know to get Sublime Text looking the way that you want. Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics at Odan here and welcome to this week's video where we're covering the visual settings you need to get Sublime Text 4 looking the way that you want. Now, there are some settings in Sublime Text that have been around for quite some time that control things that are visual in nature, and we're going to be covering those settings because some of them have new default values and some of them have whole new values you can apply that were not previously available. And we're also going to cover some newly added settings that provide some additional ways for us to configure the look and feel of the application as we see it right here. So whether you are new to Sublime Text 4 or you're a Sublime Text 3 user that's curious or wondering why things don't quite look the way that you would expect them to, this is a video you're not going to want to miss. Before we get to that though, question of the day. What is your favorite theme and color scheme in Sublime Text? Do you use the ones that are built in like Adaptive and Monokai or do you use a third party one? I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comment section below. Now before we begin, I should point out that I'm recording this in build 4096 of Sublime Text. So if you have a newer version, then potentially the default values for the settings we're about to cover here could be different. The values you can assign to these settings could be expanded. There could even be whole new settings. Now, of course, if that were to happen, I would, of course, create a video and post it here on the channel. So if you haven't already done so, you might want to use the buttons down below my talking head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so that you'll know when that video becomes available. For the purposes of this video, though, we're going to be focusing focusing on this, which is the preferences window. And of course, you can get this by using preferences settings from the menu or from the command palette. It's going to open this window that I have maximized here. In the left-hand pane are all of the default settings for Sublime Text, and on the right, the user-specific settings. We're going to be focusing just on these settings that I've outlined here in the window. And I've moved all the other inconsequential settings for the purposes of this down below the fold so that we don't have to worry about them. Remember that when you're using Sublime Text, if there's some aspect of it that you would like to configure and change if you don't like it, if you want to see if there's another way to do it, the easiest thing to do is come into this window, look in the left-hand pane, and see if there's a setting that controls the thing that you'd like to modify. And if you're unfamiliar with the configuration system in Sublime Text, which is really quite powerful and how that all works, not to worry, down in the description of the video, I've linked a video here on the channel that talks about that very thing. The first setting we're going to talk about here is the carrot style setting because that's the one that people seem to notice first when they start using Sublime Text. This is a setting that's been around for forever, but the default value of it has changed in the newer builds. Now, if you're unaware, the carrot is the name of the vertical bar that is the place where text goes when you start typing or when you paste and whatnot. And you might expect this to blink as it does in other applications, but in Sublime Text 4 it doesn't, and that has to do with this carrot style setting. It used to be defaulted to the value smooth, and now it defaults to the value solid. Now, the stated reason for this by the developers themselves is that it can use up more energy than you might expect or be aware of to just constantly update the display blinking the cursor. And if you happen to be using a laptop on battery, you may want to extend the life of said battery by not blinking the carrot. So this setting was changed by default. If you're a Sublime Text 3 user that never changed this setting, then this could be a little bit disconcerting for you. You could just set this back to smooth if you would like to get the old behavior back. Color schemes are used to control the color of text inside of any given tab. The text colors, the background colors, the gutter colors, the ruler colors, everything that's visually displayed inside of a tab is controlled by the color rules inside of a color scheme. And if you're unfamiliar with color schemes as a whole, there's a whole video series on the channel, which I've linked to down in the description below. The color scheme setting is what sets the color scheme that Sublime should actually use. And this is an editor setting, which means that you can set it globally so that it applies everywhere. You can over Write that on a file type basis, say for example, to make HTML files use different colors than CSS files. If you use projects in Sublime Text, you can apply this setting inside of a project so that anytime a file appears inside of that project window, it uses a different color scheme than it might use anywhere else. And you can even override this on a literal tab by tab basis as you see fit to change the color scheme. And that particular topic is covered in the video on the configuration system of Sublime Text, which is also linked down in the description below. Now, the reason we're talking about 
about this here is twofold. The default value for this setting has changed, and it's now possible to get Sublime to automatically choose one of two different color schemes depending on what the overall operating system uh, lightness value is. The first part of that is the default value. In Sublime Text 3, the default value for this was the Monokai color scheme, and it has been switched in Sublime Text 4 to be Mariana instead. Now, Monokai has been around for quite some time. It's a it's very well established as a color scheme, and for that reason, the default was changed to Mariana because as the packages that ship with Sublime Text become more and more enhanced, color scheme changes might be required in order to add in new rules and make everything follow the color scheme naming guideline. And the developers don't want to interrupt uh, people that are using the default Monokai color scheme by changing colors out from under them. So they've switched the default to be Mariana instead. So if you're relying on the default and it looks wrong, you can set this to Monokai. That's still a color scheme that ships with Sublime and things will go back to the way they were. Or you could use the default of Mariana. Now, the other exciting part of this is that you can set the value of this setting to the string auto. And if you do that, something interesting happens. Sublime asks your operating system and monitors the operating system to see what the overall operating theme, uh, color theme is, if you will, either light or dark. And based on that value, it will modify on the fly the color scheme setting to use either the light color scheme or dark color scheme uh, in the other settings we can see right here, which of course uh, are defaulted to Breakers and Mariana, but you could change those to whatever you like in your particular uh, configuration. And this happens dynamically on the fly. So while Sublime is running, if the operating system theme changes from light to dark or vice versa, Sublime will change the color schemes as well. So if you're, for example, setting your system to automatically switch to dark at a certain time of the day, Sublime will now follow that. Now, the Breakers and Mariana color schemes are ones that are built in. They actually use the same colors and only differ in their contrast levels with the background. And if you use Sublime Merge, these are probably familiar color schemes to you because the uh, those are the color schemes that the Merge uses as well in its light and dark themes. Speaking of themes, the theme setting controls the overall application look and feel. Things like the color and shape of tabs, scroll bars, buttons, things of that nature. Basically anything that the color scheme doesn't directly modify the color of is controlled by the theme. The theme is an application-wide setting. You can only set it once and it applies to all windows. Here in Sublime Text 4, there are two notable changes. First, the default value of it has changed. And secondly, much like the color scheme setting, it has the ability to automatically change the value of the theme between a light and a dark based on the settings of your operating system. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can leave the value at auto and fill in a light and dark theme, which here are defaulting to default and default dark. Maybe you could use any two themes you like there. Or you could set the theme value directly to the theme of your choice. You could, for example, set it to default if you prefer a lighter uh, experience all the time, no matter what your operating system says. You could switch this to default dark to get a, a dark version of that same thing or you could also set it to adaptive which is what I use in the videos here on the channel in my live streams on my alternate channel and uh, also just in my day-to-day -day use of sublime text uh, you could of course also use any theme here that you like a new setting in Sublime Text 4 is a file tab style, which changes the shape of the tabs that are used to represent files that are open inside of any Sublime Text window. This has three possible settings that you can give it. The default is rounded, which as we can see here, gives us these nice rounded off corners. If you prefer something of a more angular nature, you can set the value of this to square instead in order to get that. Or if you're a fan of the older Sublime Text 3 look with the angled tabs, you can set the value of this to angled instead. Though note that when you do that, some of the newer theme features in the built-in themes like inactive sheet dimming, which is something that we're going to be talking about in just a minute, will not work while that's set. So you may want to stick to one of the other two values of this. Also worth pointing out that this setting directly controls the theme and the theme has to take that into account. So this will work with the default default dark and adaptive themes that ship with Sublime Text, but it won't work with other third-party themes unless the author of that theme, or you, modifies the rules in the theme to uh, follow the values of this setting. 
Another new setting in Sublime Text 4 is inactive sheet dimming. Now, if you follow Plugin 101, the course that teaches you how to become a package and plugin author in Sublime Text, you'll know that a sheet is basically the contents of any given tab. So what this particular setting actually does is if you have more than one file open and visually displayed in the file, in the uh, window rather, so that you can see the content of multiple files at once, then the one that has the input focus will use normal colors and everything else will use a dimmer background color to be able to visually draw your eye to the one where typing or input will go when you enter things. This is an example of a setting that will not work if the tab style is set to angled because in that case the theme rules uh, are not appropriate. And this is also a setting much like uh, file tab style uh, in which it is something that the theme has to explicitly support. So this will work in default to default dark and adaptive but will not work in any third party theme where the author or you uh, hasn't added a rule to follow this particular setting. Something that's been possible for a while in Sublime Text 3, but only on macOS, is the ability to change the color of the window caption via the theme. As of Sublime Text 4, that functionality has been extended, so it's now possible to do it on Windows and Linux as well. So now across all the operating systems Sublime supports, if you use a theme that supports it, the caption of your window can be colored according to your theme. For the themes that ship with Sublime Text itself, only the adaptive theme does that, and whether or not it does is controlled by the setting we're talking about next, which is the themed title bar setting, which, as we can see here, defaults to be set to true. You can set this to false if you didn't want this particular functionality, but what this will do is change the window caption to be a color that is dictated by the theme. While this is turned on, it will also hide the main menu and draw it as a uh, hamburger icon in the caption instead. This gives you a little bit more screen real estate because the menu bar isn't there. You can click on that hamburger icon with the mouse or press Alt to open the menu. It's the exact same menu as you might otherwise expect. It's just oriented uh, in a slightly different way. The same menu accelerators will still work. Now, this only works for the adaptive theme that ships with Sublime because it's the only one that has rules. It's, of course, popular for possible rather for a third party theme to have rules that do this as well. Well, such a third party theme may or may not respect the value of this setting. It could, or it might just keep the custom caption running all the time. Now, of course, there are a lot of other new settings to play with as well. You may have noticed up in the tab bar that there is now a button that you can click to create a new tab. You can hide that via a setting. You can also hide the tab scroll buttons as well if you never use those and you don't want them to take up visual space inside of your tab bar. There's new options that you can use to make Sublime automatically hide tabs, the menu, and the status bar of a window while you're typing and then bring them back when you take an action so that while you're working, the interface is completely removed and you get a more zen-like experience. And of course, the other complete system has had a complete overhaul. There's a bunch of new settings that control some of the new features of that as well. But that we're going to cover in an upcoming video on the channel. So if you haven't already done so and you're interested in the autocomplete system in Sublime Text, you're going to want to use the buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share, and ring the bell notification icon so you know when that video becomes available. And until the next one, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.